Chile Coaching Supervision Certification Program, cohort 16. We are today in our week 20, week 20 of 36. So we passed the halfway mark. And uh, today, the last Thursday of the month, we always open the program to guests. We have graduates from the program coming back and we hope next year the cohort uh, 16 join new cohorts when we start our new, next programs. It's a way to keep graduates from the program to keep participating. So I've seen a couple of people already here. Oksana, one of our graduates, welcome. She went in cohort 15 with Lucy, who's here today. So great to have you here. Uh, I also see Sunny. Welcome, great to have you here. I don't remember what cohort were you, 10, nine, eight? I don't know, around that, <laughs> that time. Uh, and also we have some other guests for here today. Debbie, Mauro, welcome. Uh, I think also Irina, welcome to, to our call today. So our guests, uh, uh, if you're not familiar with supervision, supervision is a reflective space. Supervision is an, is an opportunity to keep learning, growing, looking at blind spots, looking at challenges. But the most important is supervision is not guidance or telling people what to do. It's not management. Most of the time when we hear supervision, we believe it's about um, telling people what to do. And here is all the contrary. Here we split supervision into words, supervision as an opportunity to reflect on the work we do. So this is what you're going to see happening today in this demo. Lucy, who is a graduate from cohort 15, accepted my invitation to do this uh, recording and share the recording with you. And Lucy uh, was one of the stars of her program. She was a really amazing supervisor, uh, like um, was really present and you will see how she works. I had a chance to uh, listen to the recording in advance. It's going to be really a learning opportunity for everyone. And uh, Lucy, what, what would you like people to know about you? Just share with us, what, what do you want people to know? Well, thank you, Damien, and thanks, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm in a fishbowl, and I... <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> I just have to say that out loud and let it go. <laughs> um, yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I absolutely love supervision. <laughs> um, it, and and I found myself in supervision, and I also also really love coaching. Uh, so I think it's just a combination of both that's really got me come alive in supervision. Is taking, being a coach, and then going into supervision and being a witness for coaches. It's it's an amazing opportunity for that reflective practice. Um, I am a coach for the past over ten years now, uh, with a particular focus around leadership coaching and executive coaching, um, career transitions, grooming, um, or helping uh, leaders uh, transition into being leaders of leaders and leaders of teams. Uh, I am also a systemic team coach studying with Peter Hawkins. Um, uh, and supervision is something I was introduced to from when I first started coaching, um, you know, when, when I was trained. So I had a supervisor, this was 12 years ago now. Uh, and and I, I didn't really didn't think to really didn't really know what it, really what it was until I started this program truly, um, and and I'm grateful for for the time I've spent. So thank you so much, Damien, for this invitation, for the training program, and and for put, pulling us together and popularizing. I hope um, supervision so that more and more of us um, become a part of the community. Um, would you like me to give some context, Damien, on the demo? Yeah, that would be yeah. great. Okay, so this demo was done back in June, actually, exactly a month ago. Uh, and it is with Ruth, who is my first supervisee as part of the supervision training program. And she and I um, met through uh, a, an introduction from a fellow coaching colleague who introduced us. She's also in, my, in the same city as me. I'm based in the Toronto area. Uh, so we were delighted to meet each other. We knew each other for about a year and a half or two years before we actually did this work and just in passing as colleagues. And and so she's my first uh, supervisee. Um, she is a coach herself and she uh, worked decided to work with me um, 
on a paid basis too. It was not a pro bono engagement, so she invested, which I'm very grateful for, not only her time, but also her, uh, her, um, her income. Uh, and, and sees supervision as a valuable uh, way of doing, having a reflective practice. Um, in particular, you'll see in this demo that we have worked, to, we'd worked together, so our second round of, of working together in supervision. So we'd already established a connection at this point. Uh, and, and the rest I'll have you observe and let me know what you observe and what you see and, and share with me. And Lucy, thank you very much for uh, sharing the recording and also for all of the participants of the program uh, that they are working and most of the time they are not charging because they are getting trained. I think what you share is the ideal scenario where all of these new people that you're working with become your clients and they pay you after they finish the six sessions. So just keep that in mind that uh, that's a way to start your practice by uh, the six people that you're working with eventually when they finish formally. Uh, these six sessions, you may ask them to charge, and maybe you don't charge your whole fee, or you do, depending on, on the context. But that's the best way to to start your 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 practice. So thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. So well, I make I make you call. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one thing I will add to that is I gave people a range, and I just mm -hmm. said this is a value. We I believe it's your time, our time. Uh, pay what you can within this range, and it was less than what they would pay for a trained supervisor. So um, then they chose their, mm -hmm. their rate. And that's the majority of the supervisees that I had for the training program. Great. Great. Another way also is to ask in the, the supervisee, what is the highest rate that you charge your clients? Are you okay paying that? So that's another way also to, to do it. And some, some supervisors have their own fees that they like to charge. So there are different ways to do this. But giving a, a what you were offering that sounds great too. Okay, are we ready? Let's see. Okay. David, do you want me to play it all the way through? Yeah. Or pause at any point. Um, let's say um, maybe we can, we can, that we do different things different times because this is a longer session. Maybe we can split, we can stop in the midway to, to get some observations from the participants. So for people who are in the program, you know, uh, this is not about giving Lucy feedback. This is not how when you're working triads and you practice with each other and you give feedback to each other. This is not what we do when we have graduates and guests. Here is also sharing your learning. So I'm going to ask all of the participants and our guests today too, to share what do you learn by watching Lucy? So the, the focus and the attention is in what Lucy is, is doing and what are you learning from that? So what we're going to do is maybe we can listen for 20 minutes and that way we can stop and we can ask a few people to share what are your observations and then uh, we finish listening, we go to a break, and then we'll come back, we'll go to small groups to keep discussing what people learn from, from the experience. Okay. What we're going to do. Oh, Ruth, <laughs> thank you so much for um, recording, allow me to record this session and uh, and and let's just, you know, it's confidential within the context of our training program. And I'll be sharing it with uh, the upcoming cohort. Uh, what I want to say is um, I'm really appreciative of your permission to do this together with me. So thank Absolutely you. Absolutely my pleasure. Mm. I'll walk to the ends of the earth for you, Lucy. So <laughs> I'm happy to. Yeah. <laughs> here, same here. Um, and. The sun is not coming out for some reason. It was only me, or people were not hearing either. No. I don't know today. I couldn't. Okay. Um, okay. So um, my. Oh, so sorry. Can you say? So yes, you're not here. Now, now we could hear. Yeah. Oh really? Huh. Okay. So 
Mm, sorry, can I start from the show? Yes, start yeah, I start from the beginning. Yes, yeah, only one minute. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, Ruth, <laughs> thank you so much for um, recording, allow me to record this session and, uh, and, and let's just, you know, it's confidential within the context of our training program, and I'll be sharing it with uh, the upcoming cohort. Uh, what I want to say is, um, I'm really appreciative of your permission to do this together with me. So thank you. Absolutely my pleasure. Mm. I'll walk to the ends of the earth for you, Lucy. So <laughs> I'm happy to. Yeah. <laughs> here, same here. Um, and and also to say, let's we just be ourselves. We make the best of this conversation and do what we do. Okay. Uh, I'm in. I'm in too. Uh, and so with that in, in mind, then what? Um, what is the big question concern in supervision with a coaching client that you have for us today? Um, okay, so um, my mind was on the attention of, and I th I'm not sure, tell me if this is still sort of within the parameters and boundaries of coaching supervision. Um, I'm, you know, I asked you just before we started how much when was the last time we met? And you shared with me, it was five or six weeks ago. So a significant amount of time. And, um, uh, and if this is, I'm struggling to get stuff done outside of coaching and I don't know. So I'm loving the one-on-one -on -one coaching, doing lots of it. But beyond that, I've got other consulting work, other things like business development activities that I need to get done. And I'm just struggling to get that done. Does that fit within supervision? Because if it doesn't, that's okay. I've got something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, within the supervision, uh, what we're looking for is a particular coaching case uh, and an individual client or team client, but individual client uh, that you Lucy, to, like, every time that there is a window you in a your you're stuck, where in you your computer, we can see uh, it. Okay. greater clarity Thanks. or restoration. You know, we have three pillars in coaching supervision. It's recharging. You know, where you work, work with a client is particularly um, impacting your energy levels. Where work with a coaching client may be challenging from an ethical perspective. Or will work with a coaching client is in some ways um, challenging your skill level or wanting to where you want to just really check in with yourself on, on a certain competency or skill that you're developing your formative work as a coach. So those are the three kind of areas. Is there anything within those three that you feel is worthy of our time today? And so, yes, there's lots, <laughs> of course, there's lots. Yeah. Um, here's, and here's a sort of a, 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 a slightly a twist on my challenge. And maybe this, I'm not sure if it fits in the three pillars. Okay. Um, I really struggle with saying goodbye to people. Yeah. Because of that value around connection that we've spoken about, does that fit there? Because I'm saying goodbye to a, a somebody I've been working with for six months, yes, and um, does fit. it's been the most challenging and rewarding work that I've probably ever done with a client. Yes, uh, yes. I to answer your question straightforward. Yeah, absolutely. It's it is, and within the you know, within this conversation, what is it about this particular client that the saying goodbye is a struggle? Well, so we're not quite done. We're, we're done. Um, I've been working with her consecutively for six months. Mm -hmm. um, so we're almost at the end of our run in mid-July. And, um, and what is it about her? I mean, it's a theme for me. Yeah. Um, her, because I think that it was 
although she, she was challenging to work with it, she was so not challenging in the way of difficult, like yeah. really on my game, um, <laughs> needing to be on my edge, uh, really intelligent executive. Every day I had to bring my whole, whole self full on to the conversation and, and feeling like it was so rewarding. She made so much progress. Mm. I want to, I want to clone her. I want <laughs> any of her and I love her individually. Um, so I, I, I feel like I have a love affair with my clients in a way, mm. obviously, um, ethically, um, but the, the, there's a real deep intensity around the relationship mm -hmm. that is very difficult. And for her, um, you know, because she has been my just, she was a dream to work with. She had in, huge insights every single session, uh, did a lot of work in between. Uh, most of our sessions were anchored in preparing for conversations that she was having. Um, and uh, it just felt it, it's, it's going to be very hard for me to say goodbye to her. I, I, I had this, <laughs> as I'm listening to you, I have this feeling of, and it's paradoxical feeling of grounding and, and lightness within, um, and a chill kind of about, you know, just the connection, you know, like just when you connect with people and there's like heart and soul. And so this inner feeling of, uh, I didn't even have words for it. It's almost like a home. <laughs> That's how I feel with her. What do you and notice about that as I share it with you? Um, you know, we've talked in the past about my ideal client. Mm. She's my ideal client. Mm. Um, the, and she has so much gratitude for the work that we've done. So in, in all manners, she just epitomizes that person. It's the full body experience, heart, soul, mind. Mm. Yeah. Mm, yes, and that that lightness that I felt to the feeling of appreciation at the mm -hmm. heart, you know, there was like feeling of heart and breath is another thing. What do you notice about that? Um, so each time that we start a session, so we generally meet in the middle of her very busy day in the middle of the week of her very busy week. And um, she comes with some energy with, you know, cause she's on the go meeting, doing, and she just relaxes into like, slows down her breathing. Mm -hmm. And I do with her. So there's that piece of the breath that happens. Where is that relaxation in the work that you've done with her over the six months and still to be done? Where is that relaxation, breath, heart and soul, full body experience in the work she does within her system, within her work environment that you've noticed? Well, it's interesting you asked that question because we've started talking about mindfulness oh. in the context of the stress that she's under with her work. And, um, and so I, she's just started to touch upon how can she play a little bit with breath work, with my meditation, with, she's not quite there yet, but she's very curious because she's done a lot of other work. And so this is another piece for her. Mm hmm interesting you picked that up mm -hmm. well, it's in the here and now 
I, I just I felt it in my here and now, and that's what I was playing back. And uh, there's a sense of curiosity there. Is where is that in the broader system that she oper that she works within and partners with, and how it is within your partnership and how it is within us as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I've become. I think, as you know, maybe I haven't shared it with you that I've become almost an evangelist for meditation because I've noticed such a massive change in me and the way that I approach life as a result of meditate start. I've, I've played with meditation for years. Um, but for the last six months, I do it like I exercise, which is almost daily. Yes. So it's just become a part of who I am. And I've really noticed a shift in how I show up in the world, in my relationships with myself, with my children. Yeah. How, Ruth, how are you showing up with me right now in this moment? Curious about where we're going in this conversation. Thanks for the question. Yeah, curious about what's next, how we're going to sort of move this conversation along. And I have the same thing as thinking, I'm, I, I'm, I, am, I am sensing within me a part which is present and a part which is in the future. And I'm like bringing myself back into present. And, and what I'll share is a sense of trust in how we've worked together where we get to something. And we don't know what it is. We can, we figure it out as we go. <laughs> and that's what's, what's showing up for me right now. And I'm wondering how that's in your relationship with her as well. So what's, I think she has deep trust as I do with her. Mm. Um, and right from the get go, she just sort of jumped. She didn't know me from Adam. She, like she just found me through a, a referral, a friend of hers who I never worked with, who just said, I talked to this coach that I think may be a match for you, knowing that she was looking for a coach. Um, and she's had lots of coaching in her, in her life. This is not her first experience with coaching. Um, she did not want her employer to uh, know about it, pay for it. So she did it privately. Um, so we have a deep trust. She's very intentional in her conversations. And what I notice about me is that, um, I'm, I am too about getting to the gap. So I'm, what's curious about this conversation for me is that I don't feel that there's an evident or obvious gap here. Interesting. How does that relate to saying goodbye or completion for you and her? Um, <clears throat> I, I'm not sure where that connection is. It's not clear to me. Um, about that piece of it. Just that I maybe maybe she feels her work isn't done and she hasn't quite gotten to where she needs to get. But I think there was a big shift last week, and I think that that she's on a path mm. that will will result in in our relationship ending for now. Uh, what's the significance of the for now? Well, uh, she's not clear what's next, so it could be it. It could it could pick up in the future. Um, so I'm not I'm not um, I'm not sure what's next for her. Mm. Yeah. What I'm noticing right now is we're not sure what's next in our next moments. Just like <laughs> <laughs> she's not sure what's next for her. Um, yeah, it's like the what's next is a question mark in our conversation and our relationship here. And it's also in yours with her. Yeah. What do you notice about that? Um, 
Yeah, life is unclear, right? There's lots of lack of clarity. Mm-hmm. And, um, and and going back to your previous comment about trusting in the process, mm-hmm. just knowing that there's there will things do unfold for I'm a f- fatalist, if you will. So I believe that things will un- un- unfold when they need to, at the time that they need to, for the purpose that they need to. I'm typing, making some notes for myself. Thank you. I, you know, I can use this client as a, um, it's an example for a bigger struggle that I personally have around letting go of relationships. And I would say in the past, in my personal relationships, not so much anymore about my personal relationships, um, but certainly with clients. Like I really, there's just something, it feels like rejection. Mm. Yeah, that's just come up for me. And I think it's connected to my early personal loss. And I'm going to cry. Um, I think I shared with you that my mom passed away very, when I was very, very young. And I think that that's the leaving is hard for me. Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Mm. Be with that right now. And be curious. Just want to get over it already. <laughs> ah. Ah. Yeah. What's the it you want to get over? Just that struggle, you know, like I've done tons of work around moving on and, you know, just sort of continuing to do the work. But what's coming up right now for me, um, and I'm making a note of it, is um, there's, a, there's a woman by the name of Hope Edelman who wrote a book called Motherless Daughters. And she now, write, she now runs retreats for motherless daughters. Mm-hmm. And I've toy, I was actually supposed to organize one in 2020. And... Um, you know, the world came to a grinding halt. It was supposed to be in April of 2020 in Toronto. She lives in California now. Anyway, and maybe maybe my work is to go and do that, finally do that retreat, which will maybe help more around the endings, the loss. I never imagined we were going to go here, Lucy. Never in our conversation this morning. What's meaningful about this moment for you, knowing that it's evolved out of our conversation? Just, I mean, I know intellectually that that's the connection, but just realizing that that that's present Mm -hmm. at the end of relationships. I also recently did um, an my enneagram Mm -hmm. with a a coach. Um, in the U.S. actually, and I'm a type two, which is the helper, and man, I can't, like, I just got to keep helping, 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 and that's where I think that's also connected to is, you know, not, we're on a journey, we're all on a path, so letting go of our endings of, of coaching relationships doesn't mean that it's ended, they got a life to go on and live. Yeah. And I want to be part of that to help them in any way that I can. What's the conversation that you want to have with your clients? It's different than any in this client in particular or others. That's different from any other completion call you've done. 
in just mm -hmm. in light of this revelation. It's a great question and a beautiful circle back. I think um, it's funny. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it this morning while I was walking the dog, but not in the context of this. Mm. Um, I, I think I can be transparent with this client, and I think that I can be more transparent with others in sharing my experience, my loss not my early loss, but just in fact of that I struggle with endings. Is that, I say that, I don't want to put anything on others. I feel like maybe that's putting some weight or responsibility for them. I mean, that's certainly not the intention. I have to think about how I can say that that doesn't sort of dump my load onto them. Well, good catch. Uh, what's important to you about this partnership? Like even like what I'm hearing in your, you're saying is that it's yours and maybe not theirs. What's meaningful or connected because connection is important to you to the type of relationships you have that, that are so seeped in trust. Okay. Maybe I'll ask a different way. What assumption are you making? In the, in the context of the completion call and me saying that I'm dumping my load onto them, is that may, in fact, maybe they want to hear that. Maybe that creates bigger trust, bigger relation, you know, sort of more strength in the relationship. Um, and maybe there's a question, I mean, with some clients, of course, there's restrictions and how you continue the relationship, but with private clients, certainly not. And maybe it's a question of how would you like to stay in touch? Connect it. Mm. What's it? Mm. Um, just that that I'm asking them and I and I will ask for permission to share how I what I would like as opposed to just saying it this is about the halfway mark did you want to pause here Damien Yeah, let's pause. It's, I think it's a good place. Everybody, if you want to come back and turn on your cameras. We're going to stop our um, sharing so we can. Great. Okay, so let's, um, let's hear from anybody. What are your reactions when you, so far, we are halfway of the session? What color your attention on something that you learned from what you have seen so far? Who would like to share? Yes, Jane, go ahead. Um, Lucy, I, I felt or I and saw how you were walking with Ruth the whole time. And the pace was that sort of meditative pace that you both talked about at the beginning and she talked about that was important to her. Mm -hmm. um, there, was, there was quiet, so there was time to think and feel and, and a spaciousness. There was so much room in here. I could see you thinking. You didn't dive in with the question. You waited till it came to you. <laughs> so... And um, it was 
it was really beautiful. I don't want to grab everything, but I saw so much that you demonstrated. So thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane, for, for sharing that. And, and I agree with you that the pacing and the rhythm of the session um, was really very special. And I think that reflective space is a little bit different than in coaching. Can you see that? That your that spaciousness of the reflection between colleagues, I think, was very well demonstrated by Lucy here. Rika? Yeah, apart from what Jane said, just to add on to that, uh, there was such a comfort about and ease not knowing what's next. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you called that out and you were actually true to that. That you don't know what. And it's okay, and let's just go with the flow and see what it's showing up. That was very good. Thank you, Rika. I agree with you. I think that uh, Lucy also demonstrated and showed what, how does it look being vulnerable and embracing what is present without the need to be right. You know, what are the time trying to be right? We show that what we're saying is the right thing to do. And here it was about, okay, this is what I am pressing to. So I think Lucy modeled that vulnerability and also working in the here and now, in the present right now, what's happening between us. George? Um, now what I have to say is, is somehow uh, related to, to, to what Rika brought, but uh, um, I was very impressed about your honesty, Lucy. So uh, when you say I'm nervous when I said that, or I really don't know where to go. <laughs> so I think how much of this helped her get in touch with her deeper loss. Um, mm -hmm. I think that when we, we can get in touch with something that's uh, so important to us, you know, showing that for, you know, with a coach, then she can do it herself too. Thank you, George, and you're also related to that. You could see at the beginning, I was very impressed when the client said, I can't go anywhere with you. She made a comment about that. Uh, and I said, wow, this is a good example of be trust. Mm -hmm. We cannot give that for granted. Mm -hmm. I think that Lucy, what Lucy was doing that was so beautiful was because it was that foundation of trust where you, Lucy, were open to share and be honest and transparent uh, from a place of commitment. So you were not sharing just to share, you were sharing intentionally to create that bond, to create that trust, to bring that vulnerability, to create that vulnerability for your supervisee too. I'll, I'll comment on that. I, I completely forgot it was a recording. I had to because okay, okay, that's in order to do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I'm watching it going, whoa, is that what I said? I don't remember. <laughs> not that I don't remember, but just that it was very much in the moment because I set the intention mm -hmm. to say, let's just forget this is a recording and just be us. So there's a little bit of that that, yeah, that was helpful to, to me to, to make that statement at the beginning. So that's a good tip for everybody who are working on recordings. You know, you need to bring your recordings down to your supervisors to, to get feedback, to remember that, that tip. Sometimes it was easy to say, not so easy to experience, but I think here you were pretty effective. Yeah in accomplishing that. Juan? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Lucy. I feel the feeling in the session. Your tones of voice uh, let me feel about the emotion, the caring emotions. Your facial expression let me feel the emotions of connection with the supervisor. And especially for your verbal then I, I see uh, I5 and I6, I5 parallel process uh, on the relationship and I6 and your reflection on your bodily sensation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great, uh, thank I you for, I, I was waiting for somebody to say that. So that's great because I think that uh, in the program we are talking about parallel process, for the people who are our guests, parallel process is a repetition of what happened in the here and now to what happened in the session between the coach and the client. So by looking at here and now what's happening, we may have some hypotheses or ask some questions. Um, so at one point, Lucy said, okay, this is what's happening. What do you notice about that? So it's always followed up by a question. 
And I think that Lucy really demonstrated very effectively here for everyone, I number five and six. I number five is the parallel process, I number six is bringing herself to uh, sharing what's going on here and now for me as a supervisor. Mm -hmm. So we follow a model from Peter Hawkins called Seven Eye Model. I don't know if our guests are familiar with it, but these are different places we're looking at paying attention to supervision. Erika? Um, I just love the way, I, there's a couple of things that I noticed um, that have other people have said, but just I love the way that you created the spaciousness and just such um, intimate connection. I, it, it's clear that you have such a, a great relationship with Ruth and that trust and vulnerability has been uh, shared and, and, and that you appreciate, I mean, there was a lot of appreciation and acknowledge, acknowledgement of that, even, you know, even though you have worked uh, together for a while, that, that you kept coming back to that. And I just, I love that. I love how you acknowledge like, oh, thank you so much for sharing that or, you know, acknowledging that it's hard for her and for you as well. Um, and yeah, the here and now, I, I, I noticed that you kept coming back to how you're feeling, what she might be feeling with her client, and just really using that as sort of a way to cultivate a deeper conversation. Um, and then just the continual curiosity, I also saw that. It's just like you were able to be very curious about meaning and you know wh where she's at. And then also um, the masterful way that you transitioned in back into the you know what had happened in the conversation. Um, and so I just I, I noticed that that was just a really, you did that really masterfully, and thank you for that. Thank you. Well, Erica, I, I do want to comment on, on one thing that you mentioned, um, where just uh, when I replayed it uh, yesterday, <laughs> so I refreshed my memory, and then today listening again, I was really conscious that she was bringing up the past, which was not the first time, and the staying in the modality of supervision of present and future. Uh, so just a call out for everybody. It's like, yeah, it's, it's relevant. Uh, how do you bring it to the present and what's the impact today and tomorrow, uh, whether it's supervision or coaching? Uh, I was very, I'm very conscious of that. Uh, yeah. and, and I think you show it very effectively because it can be very tempting staying in the past. So, okay, so you got that awareness, you got that insight that how you read that information right now to deal with your client and to navigate that experience. So let's hear the last two comments from Linda and Sunny, and then we're going to um, keep listening. Linda, you're on mute. Okay. Yeah, just to, everything was just beautiful and all the comments that you've already received, Lucy, a beautiful space and wonderful relationship. I, I just noticed toward the end when she was really being thoughtful and taking some notes and she's, as she's taking notes, she said, hmm, and you were listening so closely and you said, What's the mm about to extend her curiosity? I thought that was just beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. It's interesting because it's like small, small details, small things that can be very meaningful. Mm -hmm. If we stop and ask from that space of curiosity, Sunny. Thank you so much, Lucy. Um, I have a question though, and it's really about the beginning uh, kind of agreement phase in the supervision and um, your client, the friend brought up her issues and you talked about the three pillars and you very artfully kind of molded or directed the supervision. And I was wondering what that was about for you and could it have, the original topic that she brought up, could it have fit into that? Yeah. Thank you for the question, Sunny. I, I was conscious it's a demo. <laughs> and so I had uh, I had a voice in my head um, of the person who's in the room today with us, Damien. My so, accent, with my accent probably. <laughs> with an accent. <laughs> it said, you know, uh, be sure to get to, par you know, to demonstrate parallel process. <laughs> um, so there was that, that was playing out for me, Sunny. Um, and then I was also, something else, though I really appreciate the question is that I, having worked with Ruth, I felt that um, somehow, and, and you'll see it later on, <laughs> we'll still deal with, we'll still work on the topic. You'll see that. Uh, it's a little teaser <laughs> to get us going. 
um, so that so it was to to I was uh, conscious that it's a demo, so there was that, and then the other one was that when we do take a specific case, uh, it is that much deeper and more and and really meaningful and gets her reflective dialogue um, expansive, so that that was what was on my mind when I, uh, to your point, directed that, or or clarified it. Thank you. Thank you. It's, a one, it's a good time. Maybe, maybe we'll do a break now, do a five minute break, and when we come back, we listen to the second half and have a discussion of the of the whole session. Okay. So, uh, really interesting. It's like when you're you know watching like a movie, you're in the middle of the movie, and you want to have it ended. <laughs> you know, so we will find out how it ended after the break. <laughs> I'll get some popcorn and come <laughs> for yes. after the interview. Okay, Larissa, I didn't have a chance to welcome you. Great to have you here. Larissa is also graduated from the program. Okay, let's be right a bit. Good music. What I'm hearing you say is you are contracting, designing. Mm -hmm. Just like we design the beginning, we're designing the ending. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. What's shifted for you in this moment? That there's a way to, it's a, it's it's um, graceful. It's not abrupt. Yeah. Um, and that it brings me into it. I bring. I mean, of course, I bring me into coaching, but I'm I'm them centered. I often I often wonder how much or how much they wonder about me or who I am outside of the relationship, you know. And so this is a way of sort of putting a bow around it mm. and saying, "Here's the gift for us, and how do you want to move forward?" And what I love about supervision is, is it's an opportunity for you to think about who you are as coach. Mm -hmm. What's coming up for you in terms of who you are as coach as you incorporate a different way of ending? This authenticity, genuineness, um, living into my true value. I talk about my value of connection with most of my clients when we do values exercises. Mm -hmm. If we do values exercises, which I often do. Um, but I don't talk about much more than that. And connection to me is can be very different from what connection to others is. How do you learn about that with each client? Learn about what, what how they see me? How they see connection as a value. See, how do you connect on connection? <laughs> what a great question. Um, so usually it's just in passing so i don't really spend any amount of time on it um sometimes i do it a little bit around my career um transition and how i ended up as a coach um but i don't i don't 
dwell, like I really, not dwell is the wrong word, but I gloss over it. And maybe there's an opportunity to, to address it in, even in the values conversation in a way that I'd have to think about how to, how I'd like to say it. Um, but maybe there's a place there. What's coming up for me right now, Lucy, is that um, I've got um, I've got a client shortly, um, at ten actually, so right after this call, who has. I can, I know she's struggling with the value of, connect, of, of coaching. She's not, she's not there yet. And um, I've seen it from her evaluations and, this, you know, her completion call assessments and so on. And so I had already made a note to talk to her today about what would a fabulous coaching experience, like revisiting what's going on for her that, you know, she's busy, busy. And so how can we make this fabulous? And, um, and it is because of my value of connection that I care so deeply that she have a really great coaching journey. Mm -hmm. And I know she's not yet. I am um, pausing because I just, uh, I know our design has been that when you take notes and so I am late because I can hear the typing too. Yeah, Making I sure. hope it's not distracting. Not at all. No, no, it's informative. <laughs> uh, yeah, it makes me think about you and I and what are we designing right now in our supervision on connection. That's a, another great question because I was thinking about it before we got on our call today and, and thinking about the framework of coaching supervision mm -hmm. and um, how we have these conversations that are each conversation is goal oriented or gap oriented, if you will, but the framework feels not, um, doesn't feel holistic. Maybe that's, mm -hmm. and I didn't, and I was sort of curious about that. Is that the intention of coaching supervision and how does that work? And, you know, mm -hmm. because there is a structure with coaching supervision around these three pillars um, that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think what you're speaking to, uh, the organic nature, mm -hmm. not, not, yeah, is, is that the primary, in my experience, and, and also my experience in it, and, and my, um, uh, in receiving it, as well as in, in providing supervision, is the reflective dialogue, the reflection, the uncovering, the discovery, that's the heart you know, and so like, that's, that's the fuel, you know, that, well, that's what feeds the nourishment of supervision and in, in, in how I've felt it to be at a deep level. Um, it is a reflect, that's what differentiates supervision too, is it's a reflective dialogue. And within that reflective dialogue, there is a framework. Uh, and which allows us to explore issues and have some sort of outcome, although the outcome and action is not primary as it is with mentor coaching. Okay. And differentiates supervision from mentoring. That's hard. That help. Mm -hmm. How so? Um, it's less outcome oriented per se. So, so to me, there's, um, I mean, reflection is such a beautiful experience. 
um, that uncovers so much of the way our mind thinks about things. Mm -hmm. um, and we do that with our clients in service of them changing. Whereas what I'm hearing you say is this is in service of new awarenesses or more opportunity, but not to do something per se. That's really helpful. How, how does it help you in this moment? Um, <laughs> it's an interesting, because what I was going to talk to you today about wasn't, wasn't going to be about a client per se. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm, I'm kind of stuck in my own life around getting stuff done. And I'm using the polite S word. Um, <laughs> um, and it's sort of, that's a reflection of what's going on here is that it's okay not to get stuff done, just to sit and reflect on what's going on for me that I'm kind of not, you know, I mean, I'm just want to be present. I'm finding myself and maybe it's through the meditation as well that I just want to be present all the time. I think I lived my life so much in planning and doing and this and that. And now I'm just loving being present. And here we are in supervision being present. That beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful acknowledgement of the shift and change in you and the nuance. There's a nuance here. I'm curious, what are you noticing? And when I say nuance, I mean, there's this breath, like we had, felt, I feel a breath of freshness, mm -hmm. <laughs> fresh breath, like fresh, freshness, I don't know, a breeze. What are you noticing? if it's a breath but just sort of a reflection on who I am now mm. um, and the tension of who I am now and who I have been mm. for many many years the person who gets stuff done feeling as though you're being released or something <laughs> from some <laughs> the confines of some sort you know, uh, and, and, and there's an opening, you know, there's like, there's an opening, you know, I, I, I'm looking out right now, I'm looking out and in, in my imagination <laughs> on this. And I have this image actually, which I'll share with you if you like of this, um, balcony door opens up, you know, opening uh, on the outside, like it's opening up from the, um, from the inside, but outside, mm -hmm. I think, and then it's out into nature. Out Whoa. into your willow tree. Out into my willow tree. I just got a shiver. Mm. Yeah. And I would say that there's, it's, I'm still sort of not in a space of equilibrium. There's still a push and a pull. Yeah. Get stuff done, be present to that fresh freshness, the tree being part, because, I mean, it would be lovely to just be present all the time, but it's not really realistic. <laughs> um, so, so, um, Yeah, I, I, I actually last night in preparation for meeting you today, sat down and just wrote down everything that has been swimming around in my head of things to do, because I've been so busy being that I haven't been doing. <laughs> I'm within your, okay, so there's, I'm hearing an either or. And the question I have is, isn't it both? It, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so how do I 
maybe drift or float or be between yeah um rather than yeah time for both time for both without the tension to take out the tension or the the energy like the little bit of that energy what's ha- what's coming what's up happening for me is the tension informs you mm-hmm and informs your clients. And as you know, our work sometimes is around discomfort and tension with coaching, whether it's with this the client you mentioned at the beginning of our conversation or others. There is a constructive tension I'm proposing. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I think that's right. I have to figure out how to get there mm. um, and maybe through meditating and Um, just being present with it and also being mindful as it comes up in the day and how do I just sort of I feel myself sort of waffling more and I don't mean waffling in the in indecisiveness but um, being in flow being in flow yeah yes And we said action isn't the primary supervision and I'm hearing a, f- a form of commitment in, and that's okay to acknowledge too. Mm-hmm. It, 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 so the reflective, reflective dialogue allows us to get to something. And when we do, there's a commitment, the potential commitment there. I'm hearing that in your voice. I'm wondering, what are you committing to? Mindfulness around doing and being. Uh, yeah. It's simply that. And, and a self-compassion in whichever place I'm in. So um, <clears throat> when I'm doing, to be accepting of that's what I need to be doing at the time. And when I'm being, being, being compassionate, Uh, of the being part Mm. because I think I've been doing it mind a little bit mindlessly or or maybe or with some judgment Mm. Mm. around sort of it's indulging it's indulgent to be be wow yeah Mm. What's in the here and now between us and how we're being? Mm. Wanting for me, a wanting, a, a, a sort of a curiosity maybe, or an energy around how do we loop it back again mm. to endings and ending of this client with this client you read my mind (laughs) yeah i was curious where's the connection to endings uh and with this client who's wrapping up soon your private client six months there's some shift in the relationship uh, in the conversation you want to have what what is the what is the looping back What's coming up for me right now that just sort of popped up is this gratitude I have Mm -hmm. for her Mm -hmm. that she was put in my path. And it was really random how I met her, you know, sort of just as life happens. Mm -hmm. And so just being able to be mindful of that gratitude. and then making a note and being able to articulate that in the ending with her. I'm noticing kind of, kind of like a sweetness, <laughs> like it's sweet. Yeah. It uh, is sweet. <laughs> it's shifted for sure. It has. Yeah. 
how do you see her and her um and the work you've done with her and her organization and and so on how, how is there a connection to um and i'm saying sweetness is the kind of like what's here in the here and now for us but where's the the there's an opportunity or sweetness in in the parallel kind of experience for her is that what you're right. asking I, potentially, I don't know. I, I, I'm curious. I, I, you know, that there's a curiosity has been a pattern throughout our conversation as to where we've been sitting with this, not knowing what's there, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, what's what's in that system? And there's something about not just only her organizational system, but whomever her client, her her work impacts, the broader ecosystem. You know that. What's the connection for you? Well, she's had a huge, huge shift. And I think that that in and of itself is, has become not just empowering, but sweet for her. She's not um, struggling anymore. Wow. Yeah. That's, well, congratulations on that. That's the impact you're having. Yeah. And a milestone of ending and think of it, I'm thinking of it as a milestone now different from ending um, somehow like a yeah uh a recognition of arriving somewhere it's this paradoxical arrival ending arrival mm -hmm. departure yeah, arrival departure yeah what are you noticing in that just that it's a place where it's a place where she can take off that gift of just being free to do what she needs to do which kind of replicates our conversation or reflects back to our conversation of the doing and the being mm -hmm. yes so we've come for full circle we have thank you you're welcome well how do you want to complete this session um, I think, you know, just because I am action or outcome oriented is just to reflect back on some of the learnings and takeaways that if, if that makes sense. Um, so, um, so the things that I captured was to be mindful of the doing and the being for myself. So that's an iterative process mm -hmm. throughout the day. Um, and whether it's um, in my coaching and in the gaps between coaching, um, or, you know, downtime, if you will, between coaching. And I think that there's a piece around um, endings and and being authentic in my endings, thinking about how to phrase it in a way um, uh, that, and with her, um, that that isn't dumping my stuff on her, but giving her the gift of knowing that the ending that I'm grateful for mm -hmm. for the journey that we've had, mm -hmm. and that. Um, that the connection and ask her about how she wants to stay connected. And then the last piece is around the motherless daughters retreat. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel a chill within me because I feel that we've covered <laughs> uh, because of the work you're doing, this is all you, um, we've covered the topic you wanted, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. in yeah. A way yeah. What do you want to say about that? Yeah, just that so much more was uncovered in this conversation than, yes, we got to a place where I recognize uh, uh, I've had a shift in the way that I think about endings. Mm -hmm. So that piece, but even going deeper to who I am and how I am and what I do and how I be, if you will. And then a real action oriented thing around the sort of the motherless daughters retreat and if i still have some more work to do around loss yes acknowledged yes thank you and one more parallel you're welcome 
how we met is like how you met your client. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just realized that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's true. Just so random, right? Mm -hmm. Was it through, was it was through Rayanne who introduced us. Right. <laughs> of course. Right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> just like your client, I guess, was introduced to you. Right. So yeah, just how life is. Thank you, Lucy. You're welcome. We'll be well conclude here. Okay. Thank you, Lucy. What a, a great session to share with everyone here. And not all demos come out so well. <laughs> So I feel that I think this cohort having amazing sessions. I think I hope that my colleague here agree with me that uh, you have an opportunity to get great sessions. And the, the, the demos are getting better and better over the years. So congratulations, Lucy. We're going to go to three rooms and um, I am going to send you to one of the rooms and you can maybe um, observe so Lucy, so it's not the session around Lucy, and then Lucy can keep talking at there, but you maybe can observe one of the three groups. So I'm going to be sending you to um, three different groups of four. And in one group, it's going to be five with Lucy. And um, so in that group, maybe, yeah, let me see. Damien, sorry to interrupt. I'm I need to step out. So okay. if you don't include me, and I'm going to say thank you, Lucy. That was wonderful, and thank you everyone for the okay. invitation. And hope to connect soon. Take care. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming, Larissa. Okay, so let's do for 20 minutes, and let's come back in 20 minutes. Let's choose one person to take notes to share with everybody when you come back. Okay, so we'll see you in 20 minutes.